What we're going to do now is take a lot of the same graphical arguments that we made to generate this input efficiency criteria, and we're going to do the same thing using preferences. So using indifference curves and goods rather than isoquants and inputs. Okay, And that's going to give us a second criteria called exchange efficiency, about whether the allocation of goods across different individuals is Pareto efficient. Okay, And what we're going to do is we're going to construct another Edgeworth box. So to do that, we're going to now have the indifference curves for Alice. This is food. This is shelter. And we're going to say up at there's 100 units of food in this economy, just like in that last video, and 300 units of shelter. And actually, because this is available to both of them, I'm going to copy and paste this so that I have exactly the same thing for Bob. Let's put it right here. OK. And we'll change the name here to Bob. Now, they each have the same kind of set of options available to them. 300 units of shelter and 100 units of food is what the economy has available. So they're going to be somewhere in this little box I drew. Uh, let's put Alice up here. So she's got most of the food, but not a lot of the shelter. And we'll put Bob down here. So he's got um, most of the shelter, but not a lot of food. OK, just trying to draw this. There we go. And they each have different indifference curves in this case. OK, so let's make Alice's indifference curves kind of like this. So they're close to perfect substitutes. Only have a little bit of a curve to them. And then we get in this corner, they start to curve a little more. And let's give Bob something closer to perfect substitutes. So he's got a real kind of big curve here. So they have sort of different preferences. Uh, and they have different allocations to start with. Let's make Bob's a little bit bigger. All right. What we're going to do is once again try to combine the information that's in these two figures into one diagram called an Edgeworth box. So we're going to take Bob's preferences and his allocation, and we're going to rotate the whole thing just like we did last time. Flip it upside down and 180. And now we're going to merge his set of preferences onto Alice's and have kind of a description of everyone's preferences in this economy. And yeah, let me clean this up a bit. All right, there we go. So this contains all the information about all the allocations of 100 food and shelter that's in the economy. And now we've got food for Alice being measured in this direction, ranging from 0 to 100. We've got food for Bob being measured in this direction, from also 0 to 100. We've got uh, shelter for Alice being measured in this direction, from 0 to 300. And we've got shelter for Bob being measured in this direction, from 0 to 300. Now, this line here represents the indifference curve that Alice is on. If she can get, if she can move to any allocation in this economy that is up and to the right of that indifference curve, she would prefer it. So that's the region that's, that I'm shading in now. Anywhere up and to the right of that region, of that indifference curve, she prefers. That gives her more utility, okay? Bob is on this indifference curve here. It's flipped and upside down. So he wants to go down and to the left just because that's how we rotated his thing. So any area in this shaded region, which is feasible for the economy to do, they could trade to that, he would prefer to be there. And you can see that there was a region of overlap right here in the middle of their two indifference curves that was in both of those shaded regions. So this region is preferred by both Bob and Alice. Okay? So if they were 
if they are willing to trade and exchange goods and move somewhere in the middle there, that basically means Alice giving up some of her big supply of food in exchange for some of Bob's shelter and Bob giving up some of his shelter in exchange for some of Alice's food and having a more equal outcome. They're both happier there, okay? And we can see by the same kind of argument that there's always going to be this region if those two indifference curves are cutting each other, okay? If they're both on indifference curves that are cutting each other, there's gonna be some little region that they can improve, that they can move into, right? The only way that there's not going to be is if they're on two indifference curves that are exactly tangent to each other. So I'm drawing two indifference curves that are in this region. If they're right here, maybe, there's no more space to be improved, okay? So we can, I think we can actually see that if we delete this. Yeah, at this point here, the indifference curves are just touching. They're tangent to each other. And so we have achieved a Pareto efficient outcome. We can't make any of them better off. We're at an exchange. We have achieved exchange efficiency. And this requires that the marginal rate of substitution of all consumers, which is what we call people in an economy when we're focusing on their decisions about uh, what to uh, consume and their utility function. So the marginal rate of substitution of all consumers is equalized. It, when that occurs, you've got exchange efficiency. Okay, And I could do the same kind of argument I did before. If we zoom in on this, if I give a little bit more food to Alice, I slip down below Bob's indifference curve. So we can't do that without making him worse off. If we go in the other direction and we give Alice a little bit more shelter, again, we slip below Bob's indifference curve. He's worse off. He doesn't prefer that. If we go in the opposite direction and we give some of uh, Alice's food to Bob, I guess, he's now better off, but Alice slips below her indifference curve. And if we give some of Alice's shelter to Bob, Again, he's worse off. So exchange efficiency is when those two things are just tangent, and that will occur when their slopes are exactly the same. Their slope is called the marginal rate of substitution, and this is our criteria for exchange efficiency. It's exactly the same as the criteria for input efficiency, except it's the marginal rate of substitution, which is the slope of a indifference curve instead of the marginal rate of technical substitution, which is the slope of an isoquant. 